Reiki 3 Lesson 1 An Introduction to Reiki 3 Welcome to the third and final module of our certified Yasui Reiki Master Teacher Home Study Course. The video lessons within this module are based on our best-selling Yasui Reiki Master Teacher Workshops and cover the information and techniques you'll need to know and master in order to teach others about Reiki and pass on the gift of Reiki to your own students through your workshops and the attunements. Like previous modules in this home study course, our aim is to deliver the lessons in a simple and practical format so you can understand and assimilate the information quickly and easily. Important note, no manual, home study course, or even workshop training program will ever be totally complete. There will always be more to learn. Our intention is simply to help you begin the journey. Where you end up depends on you. The third degree. In a nutshell, the third degree consists of learning the master symbol, receiving the attunements and learning and mastering the attunement processes so you can then pass on and teach the gift of Reiki to others. Becoming a Reiki master is not the end of the journey. It is only the beginning of your own personal and spiritual development. A Reiki master is not suddenly a better or wiser or more enlightened person than anyone else. It simply means that as a Reiki master teacher, you're now able to pass on the gift of the universal life force to others. Hopefully a person seeking to become a Reiki master is already a kind, considerate and spiritually developed individual who is seeking to not only enhance their own life, but also the lives of others. The third degree is a natural progression for those who want to teach Reiki. The more Reiki teachers we have, the more people will be introduced and drawn to Reiki. This, in our opinion, is vital. The world as a community needs to learn to live together and come to realize that we're all connected and should live in peace and harmony. Reiki can help heal some of the rifts and issues that drive us apart. The more people in tune with Reiki, the better our world will undoubtedly become. We personally do not believe that so-called traditional Reiki masters, who can often charge as much as 10,000 US dollars to an individual seeking to study Reiki, are helping to spread the word or gift of Reiki. Reiki is a God-given right. It is built into our genetic makeup. It's part of our very essence of being. We as Reiki master teachers are just tools, just like the symbols, to be used to enhance and proliferate this natural healing method and way of life. We see no justification in making Reiki available only to the wealthy at the expense of often the most needy. The most important prerequisite to becoming a Yasui Reiki master teacher is the desire and intention to help others. We are both honoured and blessed that you have decided to begin your future Reiki study and practice with us at the Reiki store. Good luck on your journey. Reiki 3 Lesson 2 Reiki and Symbolism There are basically three different groups or types of symbols. Each group or type of symbol has its own unique set of beliefs regarding the nature of these symbolic forms. The first group of symbols are those in which the power or ability to create effect is inherent in the form of the symbol. These symbols are often found and used in sacred geometry or the tatwas. The five tatwa symbols a yellow square representing earth, a blue circle representing air, a silver crescent representing water, a red triangle representing fire, and an indigo ovoid representing spirit. Tatwas, along with to a certain extent yantra mandalas, which are visual tools that serve either as centering devices or a symbolic composition of the energy pattern of a deity, as seen by tantric seers in their visions, are among those in which the actual shape or form is said to directly stimulate the subconscious energy patterns in the brain, body, and energy body or physical and non-physical reality. These symbols are said to contain the power to awaken an ability to create a result or convey mystical information and realization of themselves with no or little action or intention by anyone. The second group envelops the belief that certain objects and symbols like a rosary or prayer beads can be charged or empowered by intention or ritual or proximity to holy places or people to contain the power to cause or create an effect. The third group of symbols are those that are tools or triggers which enable you to connect with and harness an energy, a spiritual function or information etc. that exists separate from the symbol itself. The symbol is more like a light switch that can turn on the power. The symbol itself does not possess any power on its own. Most of the symbols used in Reiki are kanjis, written words which have esoteric symbolic meaning in some Buddhist traditions. We believe that the Reiki symbols are part of the third group. They are tools, keys, on-off switches to facilitate connection with different aspects of the universal energy for healing. They do not themselves have power. There are often many different ways to draw a particular Reiki symbol. 
but they are all equally effective in connecting to Reiki, the universal life force. If you look hard enough in your future Reiki study and research, you will find many variations of each symbol. Just remember that all variations will work, and instead of worrying about which one is better, simply focus on the intention and purpose of the symbol. The Reiki symbols are exactly that, symbols. They are not what they represent. The Reiki symbols represent specific energy properties and functions for healing and spiritual enhancement. When anyone who is attuned to Reiki visualizes, draws, or internally or externally intones the name of any of these symbols, it helps them to connect themselves with the Reiki energy and activate the function and specific purpose the symbol represents. The distant attunements, which are provided as part of the home study course, will bestow an automatic ability to work with the different levels of Reiki by intention and use words or thoughts as the activator as well as by consciously invoking the symbols. Using direct intention to activate the symbol should not be a default or easier substitute rather than assimilating the information and experiences which you will gain from studying and using the symbols. It is not necessary to understand the meaning of the symbols completely or even to consciously use them to gain and share the benefits of the Reiki system, though it can enrich your experience to explore the meaning further through study and meditation. The symbols remind us that there are ways to focus on different aspects of the Reiki energy when we use them correctly in our Reiki practice. You may also use Reiki to focus on other aspects and purposes of the universal energy by direct intention. Other systems which have evolved from Reiki such as Seichim and Karuna use different symbols to focus on other aspects of the energy. However, you can use Reiki for these functions without further attunements and with or without the use of the additional symbols. The method of becoming attuned so you have the ability to use Reiki has changed over the years from the way it was originally taught and practiced at the Japanese Reiki Society. In Reiki Royo, you would meet weekly with fellow members and a master, have a lesson or lecture and possibly practice or receive healing treatments after which you would do the Hatsurei Ho meditation, during which the master would give you and other members, raid you an empowerment which helps to connect you and deepen your connection to the Reiki energy. Usually this is done gradually in accordance with your own personal development. Possibly after a period of around about a year or more of this practice and study, you might be invited to learn the second teachings or second degree as it's known now. In the Hayashi Takata lineage, called Yasui Shiki Ryo, the symbols are more important. The system was set up to teach Reiki faster than the lengthy training in Reiki Ryo. There was more emphasis on symbols and hand positions so that students could connect to Reiki in order to work with the Hayashi clinic before they developed the ability to sense the energy of clients. This is also probably why an attunement process was developed similar to the initiations used in many healing and spiritual traditions in order to greatly accelerate the clearing and connection and ability to work with the universal energies. The Reiki masters that Madame Takata trained were taught with the emphasis on the symbols and were also sworn to secrecy about the Reiki symbols and other practices. Lesson 3 The Traditional Yasui Reiki Master Symbol The Reiki Master Symbol is pronounced Daikon Mio. It is also known as the Master Symbol or DKM. It is the most powerful symbol in the Reiki group. It can be used only by Reiki Masters. This symbol is used to heal the soul. Since it deals with the soul and our spiritual self, it heals disease and illness from the original source in the aura or energy fields. It helps to provide enlightenment and peace. It also allows you to become more intuitive and psychic. With practice, this symbol can bring profound changes in one's life. The DKM symbol is a composition of three kanjis. The kanjis compose the mantra Daiko Mio. Simply translated, it means great bright light or great shining light. It may also be interpreted as great enlightenment. It represents the divine and the source for Reiki. This symbol may simply be called the Satori symbol. This symbol is used in Buddhism and is found written in Buddhist temples. Therefore, although it is sacred, it is not secret. Japanese people who are not devoted Buddhists recognize the three kanjis together. Modern Japanese would pronounce it Dekumei instead. This symbol was chosen because Yasui knew its inner meaning. Some say this symbol means great being of the universe, shine on me, or treasure house of the great beaming light. But these are simple embellished translations of great bright light. Like the third symbol, the Honshaze Shonen, we can look at the meaning of each kanji separately. The definitions below are taken from an online Chinese dictionary. The first kanji day is an adjective meaning big, large or great, grand. It is an adverb meaning greatly. The second kanji, ku, is a noun meaning light. 
It is also an adjective meaning smooth, glossy. It is also an adverb meaning merely, purely or completely. The third kanji, mio, is an adjective meaning bright, light or clear, evident. It is also a verb meaning understand, know. From this we can clearly see that the daiku mio means great bright light. The Japanese definitions of the kanjis are the same as above. To draw this symbol, you should follow the same rules as shown in Reiki 2. Left to right, top to bottom. There are more details in the manual. Most variations of this symbol are badly written versions of the kanji, which are properly shown in the manual. In essential Reiki, Steen has a variation in which the third kanji of this symbol is just a double of the kanji on the right in Mio. Essentially, it looks like the kanji for moon moon, which is unfortunate because it leaves out the kanji for sun in the whole symbol. The sun kanji is significant to the symbol as it relates to the idea of enlightenment. Steen does not actually use this symbol as she mistakenly thinks of another symbol as the replacement for the DKM, when in fact her replacement has a different function than the DKM. The symbol she uses as the DKM is from the Yusui Tibetan tradition, and when she was given the symbol she was not taught its meaning nor given its correct name, Dumo. The Yusui Tibetan tradition uses Dumo to reflect the idea of mastery along with DKM, although their version of the DKM has been distorted from the actual kanji above. To confuse the issue further, Steen has drawn her DKM, or Dumo, differently than the Yasui Tibetan tradition, turning the symbol clockwise 90 degrees and emphasizing the spiral portion of the symbol, as she associates the Yasui Tibetan symbol with the idea of eternal goddess in paganism and goddess-centered spirituality. There is another symbol also called DKM used in Barbara Weber's Ray's organization, the Radiance Technique. This symbol is quite similar to Dumo. Aside from Steen and Ray, there does not seem to be too many replacements for this symbol, nor as many variations as there are with the Honshaze Shonen symbol. The DKM symbol is predominantly used during each attunement to connect you to Reiki and may be used for treatments as well along with other symbols. In fact, it may be used instead of any of the other symbols as this symbol represents the source of Reiki. Use your intuition to guide you using this symbol. Meditation on the DKM may illuminate and help you to understand Reiki. Please note you can choose to use all four symbols in a healing session, or none at all. In other words, you do not need the symbols to give Reiki healing. After all, you can give Reiki healing after the Reiki 1 attunement. Remember that the symbols are taught as a tool to aid in focusing your energy and attention. Of course the symbols can often help healing, but really it's only because it helps direct you to the healing that is needed. Get to know the symbols well and use them often to help you focus your energy. But do not become overly dependent on the symbols, as once your Reiki knowledge, skill and understanding develops, you can work just as effectively without them. Reiki as Yasui used it was simple and easy. There were few rules. It was straightforward and uncomplicated. This is how Reiki should be. Reiki of course needs to be flexible and adaptable to both the practitioner and the recipient's needs. But Reiki shouldn't be changed, modified or adapted to the point of unnecessary complication. How to draw the DKM Please refer to the manual for more information. How to draw the DKM version 2. Please refer to the manual for more information and more detail on how to draw the DKMs. DKM, empowerment, the master symbol. The DKM symbol represents empowerment, intuition, creativity and spiritual connection. It enables recognition and clarity about your true path in life. The DKM master symbol is used for activating the initiation and attunement of others to Reiki. This is the only symbol added in traditional Yasui Reiki during the master training workshop. There are a couple of additional symbols that are not originally part of Yasui's system that many teachers have added and we'll discuss them later in this lesson. DKM activates a powerful energy for self-empowerment and is used for opening spiritual connection and intuition and cellular healing. Once you're attuned to this energy, you can use it for treating yourself and others each time you activate Reiki. It is said to work at the cellular and genetic levels and is valuable for treating migraine headaches. Many people have also found that the level 3 Reiki master teacher attunement increases their intuition and psychic ability. We have heard the DKM referred to as a vocational or life purpose function because it is often seen to initiate dramatic changes in career and lifestyle. The DKM can also be used to help manifest or attract your goals, dreams and desires into your life. To use the DKM for manifestation, you activate this energy by drawing or projecting or intoning the symbol and then clearly visualizing what you intend to manifest into your life or future. However, this will not bring you things that are not in accord with your higher self and soul purpose. 
The spiritual bodies affect the physical body. Healing at the master level is thought to directly affect the higher spiritual body template and can lead to immense transformation and healing on all levels of being and, and possibly at times miracles. It is taught in many healing modalities that all disease comes from blocks forming in the energy body. Reiki treatment will help remove these blocks, free stagnant energy, restore energy to depleted areas, and improve the function and stability of the energy body. This contributes to physical healing and emotional, mental, and spiritual wholeness. We use the Yasui DKM constantly. It calls in a complete range of the most positive energy frequencies possible in each specific situation. It can also be used to clear away negativity and as a protective symbol. One focus of this symbol is the healing of the soul. The physical body reflects the condition of the spiritual body and one can often effectively heal disease at its casual root or spiritual level with the DKM. Methods for symbol activation. The DKM can be activated in any of the following ways. By drawing the DKM with the palm center. By drawing the DKM with your finger. By visualizing the DKM. By drawing or projecting the DKM with or from your third eye. By intoning internally or externally the symbol's name three times. DKM, DKM, DKM. You can use whatever method you wish or prefer, but remember always, as with everything Reiki, it is the intent that counts and is of paramount importance. Where to apply the DKM during a healing session? First draw or project the DKM symbol onto your hands or palms, and then draw or project the same symbol onto the client's crown chakra, the areas that you're going to treat, if known, the client's hands and palms. If you find it difficult to remember the full pronunciation, Deku Mio, or you do not want to be seen drawing the DKM symbol, silently intone the alias DKM three times, as all methods have the same energy, and, as always, intention is the key. As already discussed, the Yasui Master symbol, DKM, has several meanings. The most common is the Great Shining Light. Yasui developed Reiki from his experience on Mount Kurama. He had a Satori, a moment of oneness and awakening, to his true nature. In that oneness, he created Reiki. The most common definition of Reiki can be read as universal life force. However, the kanji can also be read to mean the universal life energy or spirit coming together with us. In this meaning, it represents our oneness with all. This is true Reiki. During the third degree, we learn the DKM symbol. We are one with the great shining light. The universal life force is merged with our own. This does not come about by simple attunement or a paper certificate, but through realization. There is nothing to attain, there is no goal to reach, just oneness. The DKM is said to represent love, light and harmony. These three together represent the ultimate source in the same way the Father, Son and Holy Ghost do. The DKM is the great shining light. This is the source. Once you know the DKM, you can use it for any form of Reiki healing or purpose, even in place of all the other symbols. This is both because as a triune symbol, it contains the others and because it is the first step in moving from symbol reliance to being one with Reiki, the energy of life. Use the DKM everywhere and at any time you might want to use the other symbols. Use the name of it as a mantra to meditate. Concentrate on the ultimate source of all. Embrace the great shining light and let it illuminate you, and perhaps then you will come to realize that you are yourself Reiki. Variations of the DKM there are a number of different symbols that are also called the DKM, who have been given a new modern name or interpretation. These variants were not taught by Dr. Yasui and are not used by most traditional Reiki masters. We personally do not use any variation of the DKM in our practice or workshops, but mention them here simply for your information. Most people who use the traditional DKM only use the other so-called master symbols when doing attunements. Once you're attuned to Reiki Master level, you can choose to either ignore the non-traditional symbols completely, or if you prefer, you can experiment with them and decide what is right for you in your practice. Please refer to the manual for more information about other forms of the DKM. This completes Lesson 3. Lesson 4. Non-traditional Yasui Reiki Master Symbols There are a number of non-traditional Reiki Master Symbols available that you can choose to use or simply ignore. We personally only use the Dumo out of all the symbols discussed in this lesson. We are providing this additional information purely for educational purposes. As such, we cannot offer too much insight, if any, on how effective they are. Our advice would be, 
if you feel drawn to them intuitively, then try working with them and decide for yourself based on your own experiences and your client's feedback if you would like to use them in your own Reiki practice. The two versions of the Dumo, or Tibetan Master Symbol. This symbol, the Dumo, is pronounced Dumo. It represents the swirling fiery heat of the Kundalini. Dumo, or Dumo fire, is the heat which ascends up and over the spine as a result of the Kundalini awakening. It is said that the unification of mind and body produced the emanation of heat. Dumo is thought to be the igniters of the sacred flame of Kundalini fire. It is said that Dumo unifies the mind and body and works with the fire in the base chakra. Those who use the Dumo claim that it pulls negative energy and disease out of the body, room or situation and releases it. Those that practice with crystals report that it can be used on crystals so that they self-clear. It is used in the attunement process with the violet breath, where it is visualized in gold. Fire Dragon, Fire Serpent There are a number of Reiki branches which use the Tibetan Fire Serpent before the attunement process and before a Reiki healing session. The snake-like coils represent the Kundalini energy, which is visualized as coil energy at the base of the spine that surges upwards through the body as the coil unwinds. The surging energy of fire serpent symbol cleanses and joins the chakras. The fire serpent symbol opens the chakra system and brings them back into equilibrium. This allows the Reiki healing energy to flow into the person receiving the attunement. Typically it will be drawn down the back of the person receiving an attunement. Raku. Branches within the Reiki community use the Tibetan symbol Raku, which is often used to close the connection between teacher and student after an attunement ceremony. Some people use it at the end of a Reiki healing session to close the energy between the recipients and the Reiki practitioner. Similar to an image of a lightning bolt, the Raku symbol focuses and grounds, brings into the earth, the Reiki energy. This symbol is also incorporated in the Tibetan Master symbol and is an elongated form of the Tibetan fire serpent. The Raku symbol can also be used to help lift negative karma and bring the student to higher levels of consciousness during an attunement. Some Reiki practitioners and masters use it to draw the energy from the universe into their body and the body of the recipient. The modern DKM. The modern DKM as used in the Karuma temple is to represent Sonten. Sonten is the living or supreme soul of the universe. Sonten is glorious light or great shining light. This is what the DKM represents. At this level, as one of the meanings of the Honshaze Shonen indicates, God and man are one. One realizes, as a wave is water, and the water manifests as waves, that they are Reiki. They are the great shining light, and always were and always have been. White light. White light is pure life force. The vibration of this symbol is called the primal energy of life, directly from the Creator. White light is not a kanji, it is a calligraphy. This concludes Lesson 4. Lesson 5. The Reiki Attunement Ceremony. The Reiki attunement ceremony opens the natural energy channels in the body. After the attunement, the student will be able to channel Reiki energy. This ability to channel Reiki is permanent and lasts for life. The attunement does not turn the student into a healer. The student merely becomes a vessel for Reiki. The healing is done by the universal life force energy. It is directed by the universal intelligence and knows where, when, what and how to heal. Because of the oral tradition and secrecy that surrounded traditional Reiki teaching, the attunement process can vary from Reiki master to Reiki master. The same goes for the symbols used in the attunement. This, however, does not affect the power or the success of the Reiki attunements. The key from the student's perspective to successfully receiving the Reiki attunements from a Reiki master is that the student should be relaxed, open and have the desire and intention to receive the attunements and be able to work with the Reiki energy in the future to heal themselves and others. The key from the Reiki master's perspective to successfully attuning others to Reiki is for the Reiki master to be relaxed, open and have the desire and intention to attune others to Reiki so their students can go on and share this gift of Reiki with others in their own future Reiki practice and on themselves. The Reiki attunement is very straightforward and only takes a few minutes to perform. The student would normally remove all jewellery, glasses and shoes, depending on the Reiki master's preferences. Some argue that jewellery and metal in general interferes with the energy flow, 
and stores energy. The argument for removing the shoes is to be more grounded during the attunement. The student sits on a chair with their feet flat on the floor and with their hands in front, palms together in the prayer position. It is important to remember that we are dealing with an energy directly connected to creation, with an intelligence far beyond our comprehension. So a Reiki master is probably more guided by intuition than strict procedural guidelines. The Hu Yin and the Violet Breath The Hu Yin and the Violet Breath are generally not considered traditional Reiki techniques. You can pass attunements either using them or not. Some people feel the attunements feel more powerful when using these techniques. This is most likely because the Hu Yin is a Qi technique called the Microcosmic Orbit. When using this, your own Qi, or Reiki energy, becomes part of the mix while doing an attunement. It is also our experience that the attunements feel stronger when performing them using the Hu Yin and the Violet Breath. That is why we use both techniques in our attunement ceremonies. Please note, as already mentioned, intention is the key. So do not get too hung up on or concerned if you find it too difficult to use the Hu Yin and Violet Breath during your own attunements on others. Many people find adding the Hu Yin and the Violet Breath complicate the attunement process and they lose focus trying to do too many things at once. It is far more important to be relaxed and in the moment with your focus and intention of passing on the gift of Reiki than worrying about whether or not you have your tongue in the right place in your mouth or you're holding or contracting your muscles in the Hu Yin area of your body. The Hu Yin. The Hu Yin point is located between the anus and the genitals. To do the technique, the Hu Yin point is contracted and the tongue is placed against a soft palate behind the upper teeth. Some masters reason that when using the Hu Yin and Violet Breath when passing attunements, a special type of high frequency Qi enters the system and passes through the Hu Yin point, making this a more powerful process. Others go as far as to speculate that the Hu Yin must be held for the entire time you are doing the attunements to prevent the Qi from escaping from this point or area of the body. As with all speculation of this type, no one really knows what the veracity of such claims are. All I can offer is that Dr. Mikei Yasui did not use this process. If you're going to use the Hu Yin technique, you must practice to develop the muscular control required to hold the point for lengthy periods. To develop this muscle, practice contracting the muscles in this area. Pull gently, do not strain and hurt yourself. You can also practice contracting these muscles continuously as you go about your daily activities. As you continue practicing, it will become easier and you'll be able to hold them for longer periods of time. The Violet Breath Visualize a white mist surrounding you. Next, contract the Hu Yin point and place your tongue behind the upper teeth. Breathe in and imagine a white light coming down through the crown chakra, through the tongue, down the front of the body, the functional channel, through the Hu Yin point and up the spine, the governing channel, to the center of the head. Imagine the white mist filling the head. This is commonly referred to as a microcosmic orbit. Now visualize the white mist turn blue, then indigo blue, and begin rotating clockwise. As the mist rotates, imagine it turning to violet. Now within this violet light or mist, visualize the Dumo symbol. See it as golden. If you decide to use this technique during the attunement ceremony, you will blow the Dumo symbol and violet breath into the student's chakras, including the crown chakra, where you will project and imagine the symbol moving into the base of the spine as you silently intone the name of the symbol. This concludes lesson five. Lesson 6. Crown to Crown Reiki Attunements The direct or crown to crown attunement is the easiest way to attune another person to Reiki, and it pretty much runs itself once activated. The procedure can be as simple as activating all Reiki symbols by projecting or visualizing them above your student's head and stating or mentally intending to attune a specific individual to a specific level of Reiki, and then allowing the power and wisdom of Reiki to take over, allowing the attunement to run itself to completion. A simple and concise example of the mental intention could be, I call upon Reiki, the universal life force, to draw close, and in its omnipotent wisdom, do whatever is required to attune my student to Reiki level one. Once you activate the energy, and the attunement by intention, either with or without consciously using the symbols, the energies will flow into your crown chakra and flow throughout your body, also flowing and crossing over to the student's aura. The crown to crown attunement will run itself until it has completed clearing blocks, opening channels and connecting the energies and permanently enabling the student to use Reiki themselves. Always intend that the crown to crown attunement be in harmony with the sole purpose and highest good of the recipient. 
Use your intuition to guide you on how long the crown to crown connection or attunement needs to be. To enhance the experience for the initiate, you can mentally voice specific intentions during the attunement. To do this, silently intone that the student's crown, third eye, heart, hands, eyes, throat and feet chakras and all other possible appropriate channels can be connected with you to receive the ability to use and share Reiki, removing any blocks or impediments. Add that you intend their connection to Reiki to be permanent, uplifting and inspiring, bringing new hope, energy, information and healing abilities that will best serve them in their future Reiki practice. For the second degree crown to crown attunements, you can intend that the recipient be able to use the second degree techniques with or without the symbols. For the master crown to crown attunement, you can intend that the recipient is attuned to Reiki master level, enabling them to teach and attune others to Reiki. You can add that you would like them to be able to develop their ability to attract others to Reiki so they can continue to spread the love, joy and gift of Reiki and connect with spiritual information and energies. With practice and personal development, you may move well beyond simple verbalization and begin to internalize and perceive the attunement process and intentions as pulsating vibrations and or color or even sound. You may also become more aware of specific images, information about the recipient and be able to sense the processes and direction of the attunement as it unfolds before you. Many recipients can feel stages and changes in the attunement ceremony as it unfolds. But always remember, not everyone can feel energy or see or sense anything profound. In fact, they may only notice a subtle change during or after the attunement. Just like a Reiki healing session, every recipient of the Reiki attunements has a unique experience that is right for them. There is no correct or incorrect way to experience Reiki healing or the Reiki attunements. An attunement typically runs about 10 to 15 minutes. Though where times allow, you may take longer to possibly include some healing work and clearing or rebalancing for the recipient in addition to the attunement. When the attunement is complete, it will taper to a stop. The attunement is concluded with the intention of energetic separation of the connection between the sender and the receiver. Intend thanks and appreciation of all the participants and a return to mundane grounded awareness and a mental ending of the attunement. Say something like, the attunement is now complete. Many Reiki masters wash their hands and have the student wash their hands after the attunement as well to sever any remaining aura connection. Usually this separation occurs naturally as the attunement ends with or without direct intention or action. This concludes Lesson 6. Lesson 7. Preparing for the Reiki attunement ceremony. There are so many different ways or methods of performing Reiki attunements. They all work as long as the recipient is open and willing to receive the attunements and your intentions as a Reiki master is clear and you have a desire to pass on the gift of Reiki to your Reiki student or in some cases a client who needs to be able to treat themselves as in the case for example of a client who is seriously ill and would benefit from daily self-treatments. We have chosen to show you the easiest step-by-step -step method which we use to pass on attunements during our workshops. You can try this method, and if you like it and it resonates with you, then you can adopt it as your preferred method of attunement. You can also watch the bonus Reiki 3 videos contained within the members area and experiment with these methods also to see if they feel right for you. Alternatively, you can read and review the other examples shown in the following four lessons and try these different methods out to see which one or two you will use in your own Reiki Master Teacher practice. Remember, they will all work. Intention is the key. Use the one that resonates and feels right for you and your students. A step-by-step -step preparation guide. Step 1. Preparation and personal hygiene. During the attunement ceremony, you will come into close contact with your student. As you will be touching their hands and shoulders and blowing the symbols into their chakras, it's therefore vitally important that you are clean and you smell nice. So make sure that you shower, Apply deodorant, perfumes or cologne, brush your teeth and if required use a mouthwash. Avoid eating smelly foods that contain things like garlic and of course avoid drinking alcohol. Make sure that the room where the attunements are going to take place is tidy, smells fresh and is clear of any negative energy. A quick tip you can use the choke array or the DKM symbol to clear the room of any negative energy before the attunement. The attunement ceremony can be a very moving experience, so ensure that you have a box of tissues handy just in case your students begin to cry with the emotion of the ceremony. Step 2. Setting the scene. You will need a straight back chair for the student to sit down on during the attunement. 
If you are tuning more than one student at a time, position the chairs in a circle. Make sure you have enough room to move behind, around and in front of each student. If the room or space is tight and does not permit or lend itself to a circle, then you can set the chairs up in a neat row. You will still need to allow space to move around each chair and student. Unlike the image opposite, we prefer to have the chairs back to back so that the students are not facing each other. It just stops the students' temptation to open their eyes and watch you as you move around the group performing attunements. You can set up the circle either way based on your own preferences. If the room is too small and you cannot fit all the students into the circle or row, you will need to do the attunements in separate groups. If this is the case, try to keep the other students occupied by asking them to sit down in another room and meditate in preparation for their upcoming attunement ceremony. You may need to put on some music to help them to relax while they wait for their own attunement. Once the first group of students are attuned, you can swap them over and then ask the recently attuned students to also meditate for a short period of time to reflect on their experience that they've had during the attunement ceremony. This keeps everyone involved and happy. You can add a reverent or peaceful ambience to the room by lighting candles, burning incense and playing soft relaxing music. If you do use incense sticks, make sure that any of your students are not adverse to the smell before lighting the incense. If they are, then obviously don't use them during the ceremony. Ask the students to remove, if possible, any jewellery and their shoes. Then ask the students to sit down on one of the chairs in preparation for the attunement. Make sure that they're comfortable and that their feet are flat on the floor and their hands are in front of their heart chakra in the prayer position. If their feet do not reach the floor when sitting upright in a chair, you can bridge the gap with cushions or a phone directory. Standing in front of the student, explain that you will begin the attunement ceremony shortly by asking them to close their eyes and take several deep breaths to help them relax. Continue by telling them that you will be moving around them throughout the ceremony so they may sense you in front, behind or to the side of them at various points in the ceremony. Add that you at certain times in the ceremony need to place your hands on their shoulders and you will also have to touch and move their hands to different locations in line with various chakra points. Explain that you'll also be blowing, pushing and tapping the symbols into their palms and specific chakra points. Reassure them by explaining that you'll only touch their shoulders and hands and the rest of the time you'll be blowing or pushing or projecting the sacred Reiki symbols into their chakras. Finally, explain that you will complete the attunement ceremony by grounding them and intoning a short thank you prayer. Step 3. The Attunement Ceremony you are now ready to perform the attunement ceremony. Please refer to the attunement process in the following four lessons to learn how to attune your Reiki students to Reiki 1, Reiki 2, Reiki 3 and also all three levels at once. Step 4. Feedback and group discussion. Once the attunement ceremony has been completed, it's a good idea to share and discuss the experiences of each student with the group if applicable. You can do this formally within the classroom or you can do it during a breakout session. We prefer the breakout method. People are more relaxed and tend to be more willing to share their experiences if they feel they're just chatting amongst friends. A good way to create the breakout session is to set up a breakout area in another room, conservatory or garden, weather permitting of course. You could offer the students a cup of herbal tea or fresh juice and maybe even a healthy snack. Once everyone is relaxed, you will find many of the students start talking about the experience themselves over a cup of refreshing tea. If required, you can coax them along by asking them if anyone wishes to share their experiences. This concludes Lesson 7. Lesson 8. Reiki 1 Attunements In this lesson, we will look at how to attune your own Reiki students to Reiki Level 1. We will assume that you have already completed the setup and the preparation for the attunement ceremony, as covered in Lesson 7. And the Reiki student is already sitting in a chair with their eyes closed and their hands in the prayer position, ready for the attunement. How to perform the Reiki 1 attunement. Step 1. While standing in front of the Reiki student. You should be standing in front of your student, approximately 2 to 3 feet away from them. Ask your student to close their eyes and raise their hands in the prayer position, up in front of their heart chakra. Ask your student to take a deep relaxing breath as they perform a silent invocation, opening themselves up to receiving the Reiki attunements. Example, I, John Smith, call upon Reiki the Universal Life Force. I am ready and open to receive the Reiki attunements. Give your student a few moments to complete the silent invocation. When you sense they are ready, you can continue. Ask your student now to become more aware of the soft relaxing music 
we recommend that you play either heartbeat or reiki chant or a similar type of music. Ask your student to just relax, follow your directions and enjoy the experience of the reiki attunement ceremony. Begin the ceremony now by drawing a large chokure symbol over their heart chakra, silently intoning the words chokure, chokure, chokure three times to activate the reiki energy in and around their aura. With your cupped hands in front of your body, thumbs touching and palms facing towards the student, beam the Reiki energy into their heart chakra to open them up to receive the Reiki attunements. Hold this position for approximately 10 to 15 seconds or until you intuitively feel it's time to continue. Now walk around counterclockwise to the back of your student. Step 2. Standing behind your Reiki student. Start by standing two to three feet away from your Reiki student. Raise your hands in the prayer position in front of your heart chakra. Silently intone a short prayer. Example, I call upon Reiki, the universal life force, all the Reiki masters past, present and future, especially Dr. Yasui, Dr. Hayashi and Madam Takata, to draw close and participate in this sacred attunement ceremony for John Smith. I ask that the power and wisdom of Reiki guides and assists me to pass on this gift of Reiki through the attunement of John Smith to Yasui Reiki Level 1. I ask that this ceremony is an uplifting and inspiring experience for John Smith so that John Smith can move forward now from this point as a confident and powerful Reiki practitioner. When you feel ready and you can sense the Reiki energy around you, open your eyes, move nearer to your Reiki student and place your non-dominant hand on your student's shoulder. Now raise your dominant hand in line with your own third eye chakra and directly above your Reiki student's crown chakra. Place your tongue behind your top front teeth at the roof of your mouth and contract the Hu Yin position to boost the flow of Reiki energy in and around your body. Draw the following three symbols, the Dai Kumeo, the Hon Sha Ze Shou Nen and the Chokure in the air above your student's head to activate the symbols so that you can call upon them and use them during the attunement ceremony. Remember, whenever you draw a symbol, you need to silently intone the names of each symbol three times to activate them. Step three, remaining behind the Reiki student, draw a small choke array above the student's crown chakra to open the student's crown center. Now place your cupped hands over the student's crown chakra and beam or channel the three previously drawn symbols into the student's crown chakra, filling their whole head with the beautiful healing light of Reiki. Next, move your hands onto your student's shoulders and beam or channel the three previously drawn symbols down from their shoulders into the student's arms, chest, core, thighs, legs and feet. Visualize and imagine the beautiful healing light of Reiki, filling every muscle, organ, tissue and cell of their body, right down from their shoulders to the tips of their toes and back up to the top of their head. Step 4. Move around so that you're standing at the right hand side of your Reiki student. Draw a small choke array over the student's throat chakra to open the student's throat center. Now with your right hand a few inches from the front of the student's throat chakra and your left hand a few inches from the back of the student's neck, beam or channel the three previously drawn Reiki symbols into the student's throat chakra, filling their throat center with the beautiful healing light of Reiki. Step 5. Remain standing at the right hand side of the Reiki student. Now draw a small choke array over the student's third eye chakra to open the student's third eye center. Now with your right hand a few inches from the student's third eye chakra and your left hand a few inches from the back of the student's head, beam or channel the three previously drawn Reiki symbols into the student's third eye chakra, filling their third eye center with the beautiful healing light of Reiki. Step 6. Move around now so you're standing in front of the Reiki student. Draw a small choke array over the student's heart chakra to open the student's heart center. Now with your cupped hands side by side, thumbs together facing towards your student's heart chakra, beam or channel the three previously drawn symbols into the Reiki student's heart chakra. Fill in their heart center with the beautiful healing light of Reiki. Step 7. Standing in front of the Reiki student. Draw a small choke array over the student's hands to open the student's hand chakras. Place your non-dominant hand around the back of the Reiki student's hands so it's cupped or wrapped around their thumbs. Using your non-dominant hand, move the Reiki student's hands nearer to you 
so that they are now in a position that will be easier for you to work with. While still clasping their hands or thumbs, bend over to be about eye level with the student's hands and place your dominant hand's fingertips to the student's fingertips. Maintain hand position while beaming or channeling the three previously drawn symbols into their hands. Step 8. Standing in front of the Reiki student. Leaving the student's hands in the prayer position, step back slightly and draw a small choke array over the student's solar plexus, sacral and root chakras to open the student's remaining three energy centers. Now with your cupped hands side by side, thumbs together facing towards your student's solar plexus, sacral and root chakras, beam and channel the three previously drawn symbols into the student's solar plexus, sacral and root chakras, filling their three energy centers with the beautiful healing light of Reiki. Step 9. Standing in front of the Reiki student. Now place your hands around the student's hands and move them so that the fingertips are in line with their heart chakra. Blow the violet breath into the heart chakra. Move the student's hands now so that their fingertips are in line with their third eye chakra. Blow the violet breath into the third eye chakra. Next move the student's hands so that the fingertips are in line with the top of their head. Blow the violet breath into the crown chakra. Step 10. Standing in front of the Reiki student. Now take the student's hands and move them down so that they are resting on their lap. Draw a large choke array over the front of the Reiki student's body to ground their energy. Now place your hands a few inches above the crown chakra within their aura field. Starting from the crown chakra run your hands down both sides of their aura field until you reach their feet. Touch the floor with both hands to complete the grounding and break the connection with the Reiki student. Finally, silently intone a thank you prayer to Reiki. Example, I would like to thank Reiki, the universal life force, Dr. Yasui, Dr. Hayashi and Madam Takata and all the Reiki masters past, present and future for taking part in this attunement ceremony for John Smith. I ask that the power and wisdom of Reiki nurtures and guides John Smith from this point forward enabling John Smith to move forward as a powerful and confident Reiki practitioner. Allow as much time to pass as you intuit and then say to the student, you can now come back to full awareness in your own time whenever you are ready or this concludes the first degree attunement. At this time you might ask your student to talk about their feelings, visions or experiences that he or she has had during the attunement. Besides the joyful sharing involved between student and teacher, the verbalization allows the student to process what has occurred and helps if he or she needs to validate that the attunement worked. If several people have been attuned, this sharing can be done after all has been completed. It also helps to instruct the student if they are part of a group being attuned to continue to keep their hands resting in their lap and close their eyes once more and go inside and relax while waiting for the attunements to be completed on their fellow students. This concludes Lesson 8. Lesson 9 Reiki 2 Attunements In this lesson we will look at how to attune your own Reiki students to Reiki Level 2. We will assume that you have already completed the setup and the preparation for the attunement ceremony as covered in Lesson 7 and the Reiki student is already sitting in a chair with their eyes closed and their hands in the prayer position ready for the attunement. How to perform the Reiki 2 Attunement Step 1 while standing in front of the Reiki student. You should be standing in front of your students approximately two to three feet away from them. Ask your student to close their eyes and raise their hands in the prayer position up in front of their heart chakra. Ask your student to take a deep relaxing breath as they perform a silent invocation, opening themselves up to receiving the Reiki attunements. Example, I, John Smith, call upon Reiki the Universal Life Force. I am ready and open to receive the Reiki attunements. Give your student a few moments to complete the silent invocation. When you sense they are ready you can continue. Ask your student now to become more aware of the soft relaxing music. We recommend that you play either heartbeat or Reiki chant or a similar type of music. Ask your student to just relax, follow your directions and enjoy the experience of the Reiki attunement ceremony. Begin the ceremony now by drawing a large Chokure symbol over their heart chakra, silently intoning the words Chokure, Chokure, Chokure.
three times to activate the Reiki energy in and around their aura. With your cupped hands in front of your body, thumbs touching and palms facing towards the student, beam the Reiki energy into their heart chakra to open them up to receive the Reiki attunements. Hold this position for approximately 10 to 15 seconds or until you intuitively feel it's time to continue. Now walk around counterclockwise to the back of your student. Step 2. Standing behind your Reiki student. Start by standing 2 to 3 feet away from your Reiki student. Raise your hands in the prayer position in front of your heart chakra. Silently intone a short prayer. Example, I call upon Reiki, the universal life force, all the Reiki masters past, present and future, especially Dr. Yasui, Dr. Hayashi and Madam Takata, to draw close and participate in this sacred attunement ceremony for John Smith. I ask that the power and wisdom of Reiki guides and assists me to pass on this gift of Reiki through the attunement of John Smith to Yasui Reiki Level 2. I ask that this ceremony is an uplifting and inspiring experience for John Smith so that John Smith can move forward now from this point as a confident and powerful advanced Reiki practitioner. When you feel ready and you can sense the Reiki energy around you, open your eyes, move nearer to your Reiki student and place your non-dominant hand on your student's shoulder. Now raise your dominant hand in line with your own third eye chakra and directly above your Reiki student's crown chakra. Place your tongue behind your top front teeth at the roof of your mouth and contract the Hu Yin position to boost the flow of Reiki energy in and around your body. Draw the following three symbols, the Dai Kumeo, the Hon Sha Zai Sho Nen and the Chokure in the air above your student's head to activate the symbols so that you can call upon them and use them during the attunement ceremony. Remember whenever you draw a symbol you need to silently intone the names of each symbol three times to activate them. Step 3. Remaining behind the Reiki student. Draw a small choker ray above the student's crown chakra to open the student's crown center. Now place your cupped hands over the student's crown chakra and beam or channel the three previously drawn symbols into the student's crown chakra. Fill in their whole head with the beautiful healing light of Reiki. Next move your hands onto your student's shoulders and beam or channel the three previously drawn symbols down from their shoulders into the student's arms, chest, core, thighs, legs and feet. Visualize and imagine the beautiful healing light of Reiki filling every muscle, organ, tissue and cell of their body right down from their shoulders to the tips of their toes and back up to the top of their head. Step 4. Move around so that you're standing at the right hand side of your Reiki student. Draw a small choker ray over the student's throat chakra to open the student's throat center. Now with your right hand a few inches from the front of the student's throat chakra and your left hand a few inches from the back of the student's neck, beam or channel the three previously drawn Reiki symbols into the student's throat chakra, fill in their throat center with the beautiful healing light of Reiki. Step 5. Remain standing at the right hand side of the Reiki student. Now draw a small choker ray over the student's third eye chakra to open the student's third eye center. Now with your right hand a few inches from the student's third eye chakra and your left hand a few inches from the back of the student's head, beam or channel the three previously drawn Reiki symbols into the student's third eye chakra, fill in their third eye center with the beautiful healing light of Reiki. Step 6. Move around now so you're standing in front of the Reiki student. Draw a small choker ray over the student's heart chakra to open the student's heart center. Now with your cupped hands side by side, thumbs together facing towards your student's heart chakra, beam or channel the three previously drawn symbols into the Reiki student's heart chakra. Fill in their heart center with the beautiful healing light of Reiki. Step 7. Standing in front of the Reiki student. Draw a small choker ray over the student's hands to open the student's hand chakras. Place your hands now on the back of the student's hands and gently hold and open them up, a little bit like opening up a book, and move them down towards their lap so that their palms are facing upwards towards you. Draw the Chokurei, Sai Hiki and the Hon Sha Zai Shonen symbols into the palm of the student's right hand. Tap the symbols into the student's right hand and silently intone that the symbols will remain with the student for life. Now draw the Chokurei, Sai Hiki and Hon Sha Zai Shonen symbols into the palm of the student's left hand. 
tap the symbols into the student's left hand and silently intone that the symbols will remain with the student for life. Once the symbols have been embedded into both palms, hold in the back of the student's hands again, guide their hands back together into the prayer position and move their hands up in line with their heart chakra. Step 8. Standing in front of the Reiki student. Leaving the student's hands in the prayer position, step back slightly and draw a small choke array over the student's solar plexus, sacral and root chakras to open the student's remaining three energy centers. Now with your cupped hands side by side, thumbs together facing towards your student's solar plexus, sacral and root chakras, beam and channel the three previously drawn symbols into the student's solar plexus, sacral and root chakras, filling their three energy centers with the beautiful healing light of Reiki. Step 9. Standing in front of the Reiki student. Now place your hands around the student's hands and move them so that the fingertips are in line with their heart chakra. Blow the violet breath into the heart chakra. Move the student's hands now so that their fingertips are in line with their third eye chakra. Blow the violet breath into the third eye chakra. Next move the student's hands so that the fingertips are in line with the top of their head. Blow the violet breath into the crown chakra. Step 10. Standing in front of the Reiki student. Now take the student's hands and move them down so that they're resting on their lap. Draw a large choke array over the front of the Reiki student's body to ground their energy. Now place your hands a few inches above the crown chakra within their aura field. Starting from the crown chakra, run your hands down both sides of their aura field until you reach their feet. Touch the floor with both hands to complete the grounding and break the connection with the Reiki student. Finally, silently intone a thank you prayer to Reiki. Example, I would like to thank Reiki, the universal life force, Dr. Yasui, Dr. Hayashi and Madam Takata and all the Reiki masters past, present and future for taking part in this attunement ceremony for John Smith. I ask that the power and wisdom of Reiki nurtures and guides John Smith from this point forward, enabling John Smith to move forward as a powerful and confident advanced Reiki practitioner. Allow as much time to pass as you intuit and then say to the student, you can now come back to full awareness in your own time whenever you're ready or this concludes the second degree attunement. At this time you might ask your student to talk about their feelings, visions or experiences that he or she has had during the attunement. Besides the joyful sharing involved between student and teacher, the verbalization allows the student to process what has occurred and helps if he or she needs to validate that the attunement worked. If several people have been attuned, this sharing can be done after all has been completed. It also helps to instruct the student if they are part of a group being attuned to continue to keep their hands resting in their lap and close their eyes once more and go inside and relax while waiting for the attunements to be completed on their fellow students. This concludes Lesson 9. Lesson 10, Reiki 3, Attunements. In this lesson, we will look at how to attune your own Reiki students to Reiki Level 3. We will assume that you have already completed the setup and the preparation for the attunement ceremony, as covered in Lesson 7. And the Reiki student is already sitting in a chair, with their eyes closed and their hands in the prayer position, ready for the attunement. How to perform the Reiki 3 attunement. Step 1 while standing in front of the Reiki student. You should be standing in front of your student approximately two to three feet away from them. Ask your student to close their eyes and raise their hands in the prayer position up in front of their heart chakra. Ask your student to take a deep relaxing breath as they perform a silent invocation, opening themselves up to receiving the Reiki attunements. Example, I, John Smith, call upon Reiki, the universal life force. I am ready and open to receive the Reiki attunements. Give your student a few moments to complete the silent invocation. When you sense they are ready, you can continue. Ask your student now to become more aware of the soft, relaxing music. We recommend that you play either heartbeat or Reiki chant or a similar type of music. Ask your student to just relax, follow your directions, and enjoy the experience of the Reiki attunement ceremony. Begin the ceremony now by drawing a large choker ray symbol over their heart chakra. 
silently intoning the words Chokurei, Chokurei, Chokurei three times to activate the Reiki energy in and around their aura. With your cupped hands in front of your body, thumbs touching and palms facing towards the student, beam the Reiki energy into their heart chakra to open them up to receive the Reiki attunements. Hold this position for approximately 10 to 15 seconds or until you intuitively feel it's time to continue. Now walk around counterclockwise to the back of your student. Step 2. Standing behind your Reiki student. Start by standing 2 to 3 feet away from your Reiki student. Raise your hands in the prayer position in front of your heart chakra. Silently intone a short prayer. Example, I call upon Reiki, the universal life force, all the Reiki masters past, present and future, especially Dr. Yasui, Dr. Hayashi and Madam Takata, to draw close and participate in this sacred attunement ceremony for John Smith. I ask that the power and wisdom of Reiki guides and assist me to pass on this gift of Reiki through the attunement of John Smith to Yasui, Reiki Level 3. I ask that this ceremony is an uplifting and inspiring experience for John Smith, so that John Smith can move forward now from this point as a confident and powerful Reiki Master Teacher. When you feel ready, and you can sense the Reiki energy around you, open your eyes, move nearer to your Reiki student, and place your non-dominant hand on your student's shoulder. Now raise your dominant hand in line with your own third eye chakra, and directly above your Reiki student's crown chakra. Place your tongue behind your top front teeth at the roof of your mouth and contract the Hu Yin position to boost the flow of Reiki energy in and around your body. Draw the following three symbols, the Dai Kumeo, the Hon Sha Zei Shou Nen and the Chokurei in the air above your student's head to activate the symbols so that you can call upon them and use them during the attunement ceremony. Remember whenever you draw a symbol you need to silently intone the names of each symbol three times to activate them. Step 3. Remaining behind the Reiki student. Draw a small choker ray above the student's crown chakra to open the student's crown center. Now place your cupped hands over the student's crown chakra and beam or channel the three previously drawn symbols into the student's crown chakra, filling their whole head with the beautiful healing light of Reiki. Next move your hands onto your student's shoulders and beam or channel the three previously drawn symbols down from their shoulders into the student's arms, chest, core, thighs, legs and feet. Visualize and imagine the beautiful healing light of Reiki filling every muscle, organ, tissue and cell of their body, right down from their shoulders to the tips of their toes and back up to the top of their head. Step 4. Move around so that you're standing at the right hand side of your Reiki student. Draw a small choker ray over the student's throat chakra to open the student's throat center. Now with your right hand a few inches from the front of the student's throat chakra and your left hand a few inches from the back of the student's neck, beam or channel the three previously drawn Reiki symbols into the student's throat chakra, fill in their throat center with the beautiful healing light of Reiki. Step 5. Remain standing at the right hand side of the Reiki student. Now draw a small choker ray over the student's third eye chakra to open the student's third eye center. Now with your right hand a few inches from the student's third eye chakra and your left hand a few inches from the back of the student's head, beam or channel the three previously drawn Reiki symbols into the student's third eye chakra, fill in their third eye center with the beautiful healing light of Reiki. Step 6. Move around now so you're standing in front of the Reiki student. Draw a small choker ray over the student's heart chakra to open the student's heart center. Now with your cupped hands side by side, thumbs together facing towards your student's heart chakra, beam or channel the three previously drawn symbols into the Reiki student's heart chakra. Fill in their heart center with the beautiful healing light of Reiki. Step 7. Standing in front of the Reiki student. Draw a small choker ray over the student's hands to open the student's hand chakras. Place your hands now on the back of the student's hands and gently hold and open them up, a little bit like opening up a book, and move them down towards their lap so that their palms are facing upwards towards you. Draw the master symbol, the DKM, into the palm of the student's right hand. Tap the symbols into the student's right hand and silently intone that the symbols will remain with the student for life. Now draw the master symbol, the DKM, into the palm of the student's left hand. 
tap the symbols into the student's left hand and silently intone that the symbols will remain with the student for life. Once the symbols have been embedded into both palms, hold in the back of the student's hands again, guide their hands back together into the prayer position and move their hands up in line with their heart chakra. Step 8. Standing in front of the Reiki student. Leaving the student's hands in the prayer position, step back slightly and draw a small choke array over the student's solar plexus, sacral and root chakras to open the student's remaining three energy centers. Now with your cupped hands side by side, thumbs together facing towards your student's solar plexus, sacral and root chakras, beam and channel the three previously drawn symbols into the student's solar plexus, sacral and root chakras, filling their three energy centers with the beautiful healing light of Reiki. Step 9. Standing in front of the Reiki student. Now place your hands around the student's hands and move them so that the fingertips are in line with their heart chakra. Blow the violet breath into the heart chakra. Move the student's hands now so that their fingertips are in line with their third eye chakra. Blow the violet breath into the third eye chakra. Next move the student's hands so that the fingertips are in line with the top of their head. Blow the violet breath into the crown chakra. Step 10. Standing in front of the Reiki student. Now take the student's hands and move them down so that they're resting on their lap. Draw a large choke array over the front of the Reiki student's body to ground their energy. Now place your hands a few inches above the crown chakra within their aura field. Starting from the crown chakra, run your hands down both sides of their aura field until you reach their feet. Touch the floor with both hands to complete the grounding and break the connection with the Reiki student. Finally, silently intone a thank you prayer to Reiki. Example, I would like to thank Reiki, the universal life force, Dr. Yasui, Dr. Hayashi, and Madam Takata, and all the Reiki masters past, present, and future for taking part in this attunement ceremony for John Smith. I ask that the power and wisdom of Reiki nurtures and guides John Smith from this point forward enabling John Smith to move forward as a powerful and confident Reiki master teacher. Allow as much time to pass as you intuit, and then say to the student, you can now come back to full awareness in your own time, whenever you are ready, or this concludes the Reiki 3 attunement. At this time you might ask your student to talk about their feelings, visions or experiences that he or she has had during the attunement. Besides the joyful sharing involved between student and teacher, the verbalization allows the student to process what has occurred and helps if he or she needs to validate that the attunement worked. If several people have been attuned, this sharing can be done after all has been completed. It also helps to instruct the student if they are part of a group being attuned to continue to keep their hands resting in their lap and close their eyes once more and go inside and relax while waiting for the attunements to be completed on their fellow students. This concludes Lesson 10. Lesson 11. Fast Track or Combined Reiki 1, 2 and 3 Attunements. In this lesson we will look at how to attune your own Reiki students to Reiki level 1, 2 and 3 in a single combined attunement. We will assume that you have already completed the setup and the preparation for the attunement ceremony as covered in Lesson 7. And the Reiki student is already sitting in a chair with their eyes closed and their hands in the prayer position ready for the attunement. How to perform the combined Reiki 1, 2 and 3 attunements. Step 1. While standing in front of the Reiki student. You should be standing in front of your student approximately 2 to 3 feet away from them. Ask your student to close their eyes and raise their hands in the prayer position up in front of their heart chakra. Ask your student to take a deep relaxing breath as they perform a silent invocation opening themselves up to receiving the Reiki attunements. Example, I, John Smith, call upon Reiki, the universal life force. I am ready and open to receive the Reiki attunements. Give your student a few moments to complete the silent invocation. When you sense they are ready, you can continue. Ask your student now to become more aware of the soft, relaxing music. We recommend that you play either heartbeat or Reiki chant or a similar type of music. Ask your student to just relax, follow your directions, and enjoy the experience of the Reiki attunement ceremony.
Begin the ceremony now by drawing a large Chokure symbol over their heart chakra, silently intoning the words Chokure, Chokure, Chokure three times to activate the Reiki energy in and around their aura. With your cupped hands in front of your body, thumbs touching and palms facing towards the student, beam the Reiki energy into their heart chakra to open them up to receive the Reiki attunements. Hold this position for approximately 10 to 15 seconds or until you intuitively feel it's time to continue. Now walk around counterclockwise to the back of your student. Step 2. Standing behind your Reiki student. Start by standing 2 to 3 feet away from your Reiki student. Raise your hands in the prayer position in front of your heart chakra. Silently intone a short prayer. Example, I call upon Reiki, the universal life force, all the Reiki masters past, present and future, especially Dr. Yasui, Dr. Hayashi and Madam Takata, to draw close and participate in this sacred attunement ceremony for John Smith. I ask that the power and wisdom of Reiki guides and assists me to pass on this gift of Reiki through the attunement of John Smith to all three levels of Yusui Reiki, Reiki 1, Reiki 2 and Reiki 3. I ask that this ceremony is an uplifting and inspiring experience for John Smith so that John Smith can move forward now from this point as a confident and powerful Reiki master teacher. When you feel ready and you can sense the Reiki energy around you, open your eyes, move nearer to your Reiki student and place your non-dominant hand on your student's shoulder. Now raise your dominant hand in line with your own third eye chakra and directly above your Reiki student's crown chakra. Place your tongue behind your top front teeth at the roof of your mouth and contract the Hu Yin position to boost the flow of Reiki energy in and around your body. Draw the following three symbols, the Dai Kumeo, the Hon Sha Zei Nen and the Chokure in the air above your student's head to activate the symbols so that you can call upon them and use them during the attunement ceremony. Remember whenever you draw a symbol you need to silently intone the names of each symbol three times to activate them. Step 3. Remaining behind the Reiki student. Draw a small choke array above the student's crown chakra to open the student's crown center. Now place your cupped hands over the student's crown chakra and beam or channel the three previously drawn symbols into the student's crown chakra. Fill in their whole head with the beautiful healing light of Reiki. Next move your hands onto your student's shoulders and beam or channel the three previously drawn symbols down from their shoulders into the student's arms, chest, core, thighs, legs and feet. Visualize and imagine the beautiful healing light of Reiki filling every muscle, organ, tissue and cell of their body right down from their shoulders to the tips of their toes and back up to the top of their head. Step 4. Move around so that you're standing at the right hand side of your Reiki student. Draw a small choke array over the student's throat chakra to open the student's throat center. Now with your right hand a few inches from the front of the student's throat chakra and your left hand a few inches from the back of the student's neck, beam or channel the three previously drawn Reiki symbols into the student's throat chakra, fill in their throat center with the beautiful healing light of Reiki. Step 5. Remain standing at the right hand side of the Reiki student. Now draw a small choke array over the student's third eye chakra to open the student's third eye center. Now with your right hand a few inches from the student's third eye chakra and your left hand a few inches from the back of the student's head, beam or channel the three previously drawn Reiki symbols into the student's third eye chakra, fill in their third eye center with the beautiful healing light of Reiki. Step 6. Move around now so you're standing in front of the Reiki student. Draw a small choke array over the student's heart chakra to open the student's heart center. Now with your cupped hands side by side, thumbs together facing towards your student's heart chakra, beam or channel the three previously drawn symbols into the Reiki student's heart chakra. Fill in their heart center with the beautiful healing light of Reiki. Step 7. Standing in front of the Reiki student. Draw a small choke array over the student's hands to open the student's hand chakras. Place your hands now on the back of the student's hands and gently hold and open them up, a little bit like opening up a book, and move them down towards their lap so that their palms are facing upwards towards you. Draw the Chokurei, Sai Hiki, Hon Sha Zei Shou Nen, and the master symbol, the DKM, into the palm of the student's right hand. Tap the symbols into the student's right hand 
and silently intone that the symbols will remain with the student for life. Draw the Chokurei, Saihiki, Honsha Zeisho Nen, and the master symbol, the DKM, into the palm of the student's left hand. Tap the symbols into the student's left hand, and silently intone that the symbols will remain with the student for life. Once the symbols have been embedded into both palms, hold in the back of the student's hands again, guide their hands back together into the prayer position, and move their hands up in line with their heart chakra. Step 8. Standing in front of the Reiki student. Leaving the student's hands in the prayer position, step back slightly and draw a small choke array over the student's solar plexus, sacral and root chakras, to open the student's remaining three energy centers. Now with your cupped hands side by side, thumbs together facing towards your student's solar plexus, sacral and root chakras, beam and channel the three previously drawn symbols into the student's solar plexus, sacral and root chakras, filling their three energy centers with the beautiful healing light of Reiki. Step 9. Standing in front of the Reiki student. Now place your hands around the student's hands and move them so that the fingertips are in line with their heart chakra. Blow the violet breath into the heart chakra. Move the student's hands now so that their fingertips are in line with their third eye chakra. Blow the violet breath into the third eye chakra. Next move the student's hands so that the fingertips are in line with the top of their head. Blow the violet breath into the crown chakra. Step 10. Standing in front of the Reiki student. Now take the student's hands and move them down so that they're resting on their lap. Draw a large choke array over the front of the Reiki student's body to ground their energy. Now place your hands a few inches above the crown chakra within their aura field. Starting from the crown chakra, run your hands down both sides of their aura field until you reach their feet. Touch the floor with both hands to complete the grounding and break the connection with the Reiki student. Finally, silently intone a thank you prayer to Reiki. Example, I would like to thank Reiki, the universal life force, Dr. Yasui, Dr. Hayashi and Madam Takata and all the Reiki masters past, present and future for taking part in this attunement ceremony for John Smith. I ask that the power and wisdom of Reiki nurtures and guides John Smith from this point forward, enabling John Smith to move forward as a powerful and confident Reiki master teacher. Allow as much time to pass as you intuit, and then say to the student, you can now come back to full awareness in your own time, whenever you're ready, or this concludes the combined Reiki 1, 2 and 3 attunements. At this time you might ask your student to talk about their feelings, visions or experiences that he or she has had during the attunement. Besides the joyful sharing involved between student and teacher, the verbalization allows the student to process what has occurred and helps if he or she needs to validate that the attunement worked. If several people have been attuned, this sharing can be done after all has been completed. It also helps to instruct the student if they are part of a group being attuned to continue to keep their hands resting in their lap and close their eyes once more and go inside and relax while waiting for the attunements to be completed on their fellow students. This concludes Lesson 11. Lesson 12. Absent or Distant Reiki Attunements Much has been written about distant attunements in Reiki. In our experience, and more importantly in the experience of our many thousands of Reiki students who have completed our Reiki Home Study course and received the distant attunements from us as shown, that distant attunements are just as effective as attunements received in person during a workshop or therapy session. Distant attunements are ideal for people who are unable to travel or attend a workshop or have an urgent need to become attuned to and use Reiki for personal healing, for example, or because they would like to pursue a path in teaching and healing. We provide this service because we believe that Reiki should be available to everyone at an affordable price. All of our distant attunements are performed by both of us and are conducted to the highest professional standards with a strong emphasis on attention to personal detail. We use an attunement booking form on our website to organise the attunements for our own students. However, you could also use other methods like email, phone or in person to set up distant attunements for your own students. We also attune all of our students to all three levels of Reiki at once using the combined Reiki 1, 2 and 3 distant attunement technique as shown in Lesson 11 of this manual. You can and may choose to offer this service as individual attunements and perform distant Reiki 1, 2 and 3 attunements separately. The benefits of Reiki distant attunements 
Just as the sacred Reiki symbols facilitate distant healing, allowing Reiki practitioners to treat clients anywhere in the world, it is also possible for a Reiki master to perform the attunement ceremony to initiate their students distantly around the globe as well. However, it's important to remember that although distant attunements enable the recipient to practice Reiki, they must also make the commitment to read and assimilate the information provided in our video home study course manuals, Reiki store website members area, or by attending a workshop to ensure that they're working in accordance with the guidelines set out in the Yasui method of healing. It is also vitally important to practice Reiki on yourself and others to gain experience and a better understanding of the energy. Many people who are dedicated and motivated self-starters have become competent Reiki practitioners and master teachers after remote distant attunements. In fact, we've helped over 10,000 Reiki students around the world achieve their dream of becoming a Reiki master thanks to distant attunements. One of the great benefits of Reiki distant attunements is when a non-Reiki individual and or a Reiki practitioner suffers a family or close friend wellness emergency and they desperately want to help them but cannot get to that friend or family member due to the logistics they live probably in another part of the world. The non-Reiki individual or Reiki practitioner can contact a Reiki master and request that they attune the sick individual to Reiki level 1 distantly so that the sick individual can perform self-treatments to aid in any medical treatment and or distant Reiki or spiritual healing. The great thing about Reiki is that it requires only minimal training, so the sick individual can be given simple instructions on where to place their hands, even if it's only on one location, to perform a self-treatment. Reiki will always go where it's needed. Distant Attunement Preparation Guidelines Remote distant attunements and direct transmission of Reiki attunements, both in person, as in the case of a crown-to-crown -crown attunement, where the recipient is in the same room, and also at a distance when the recipient is in another place, maybe another country or state, is an ancient and respected way of transmitting elements of spiritual awakening, wisdom, information or spiritual abilities between teacher and their students. Distant achievements reinforce the fact that all living things are interconnected and can communicate at a deeper unconscious level. However, it is important to remember and point out that whether you or your student is attuned via a distant Reiki attunement ceremony or in a workshop environment, you or your student is responsible for your own practice, study and personal development as a Reiki practitioner or master. Make sure you really want to and are really committed to the study of this wonderful gift before embarking on a workshop or distant attunement. You or your student's intention to be attuned and work with Reiki is always the key to success. If as a Reiki master teacher you decide to provide distant attunements, there are a few things to do to enhance the experience. Decide on either or both methods in advance, direct transmission and or surrogate proxy. Agree upon a mutually acceptable day, date and time in advance to perform the distant attunement ceremony. If possible, the recipient should try to be in a receptive and accepting, eager to receive mental state. Although it's not absolutely necessary that the student be paying attention or even be awake to receive the distant attunements. Request that the recipient either lies or sits down in a comfortable location. Please note, once the process has begun, the recipient can get up and move around during the attunement or even leave the area and still receive the full attunement. However, most people enjoy the experience more if they set aside the time and find a quiet place to receive the attunements in a meditative, receptive state with their eyes closed, hands resting on their laps, palms facing upwards or held in a praying hands position. Point out to the recipient that receiving the distant Reiki attunements is only part of the process. They must commit enough study time and practice to learn and master the techniques on their own. Reiki is an intuitive practice, but studying the material thoroughly gives intuition a starting point. Recommend that the recipient listens to a piece of deep relaxing music like heartbeats or the Reiki chant. The most common challenge of remote distant attunements is helping the recipient understand that we all experience Reiki in different ways. Just like an in-person Reiki healing session, everyone will experience a distant attunement ceremony differently. Some of the most common experiences are as follows. The recipient will feel heat or cold or sense a wave of overwhelming love. The recipient will see colours, images or symbols. The recipient will sense other people or energy around them, whether profound or as a subtle feeling of peace. The recipient will hear sounds or voices. The recipient will become emotional or deeply moved. The recipient will see or sense past lives or past masters like Dr. Yasui. The recipient will see or sense their spiritual guides or loved ones that have passed over. It is important to remember that firstly there is no right or wrong way to experience the attunements, and secondly that this is just the beginning of your journey, your paths with Reiki, and not everyone will experience dramatic effects, and some may even have difficulty sensing the subtle yet profound power of Reiki during the attunement ceremony. 
For the best results and experience during any attunement ceremony, you or your student should have the right intention to be connected to the universal life force and just be relaxed, open and let it happen. Enjoy and live in the moment. There are a number of ways of performing a Reiki distant attunement including the direct intention method. The direct intention method involves you connecting energetically with the recipient as though connected by cords of healing white light and facilitates or allows the attunement to run across the direct connection. We would normally recommend the direct intention method if you are in the same room or area as the recipient. An example of this could be in the case of a very sick person in hospital. You may visit them and it's not practical to attune them while they are lying ill in a hospital bed, but you would like to be able to help them by giving them the gift of Reiki so they can consciously or unconsciously work with Reiki by conducting self-treatments. So in this example you could use the crown to crown direct intention method and attune them to Reiki 1 and intend that they have the ability to perform self-treatments each time they place their hands on their body or think about healing and getting better. The direct intention using a surrogate method. You can combine the direct intention method with the use of a proxy or surrogate, something like a teddy bear or your legs, etc., and give the attunement in person to the proxy while intending that it goes simultaneously to the recipient. Please refer back to the Reiki 2 manual or Reiki 2 video lessons for more information on how to use a surrogate or proxy. Thanks to technology, we can now use tools like Google Maps to help us even more to visualize the connection to the distant Reiki recipient. An example of how to connect to perform a distant attunement. We as the Reiki master who will perform the distant attunement are based in Hertfordshire, UK. Our student or recipient of the distant attunements lives in Dublin, Ireland. We can log into Google Maps and just visualize our journey or flight across time and space to reach the recipient's house in the Dublin area in general, as shown opposite. Or we could even be more specific and type in the address of the recipients and use where available Google Street View to help us visualize the exact location of the recipient so we can create an even stronger connection for the attunement. Please see illustrations. Now we can see the exact location where the Reiki student will be doing the distant attunement ceremony. We can imagine ourselves leaving our own location and traveling across time and space to be in the same location or room with the Reiki student. Another method would be to just ask the power and wisdom of Reiki to allow and guide you to connect with the recipient across time and space. Imagine Reiki setting up the connection and transporting you to the recipient's home so you can be in the room with them. You could then ask Reiki once the attunement is completed to transport you back home to your current location and break the connection. How the recipient should prepare for the attunement ceremony. There are a few things the recipient should do in order to prepare for the distant attunement ceremony that will help to enhance their experience. You should provide guidance to your students so they're ready and open to receive the distant attunements. The recipient stroke students should prepare for the distant attunements as follows. The student should have agreed and booked the day, date and time which is convenient for them when they'll be able to take at least 30 minutes to sit down in a comfortable chair and relax without being disturbed. They should unplug their phone, turn off their mobile and switch off any other devices that may spoil the moment or the ceremony. The student should ensure that the temperature of the room that they've selected to use for the distant attunement ceremony is comfortably warm so they can completely relax. The student could also burn candles or incense sticks to help clear the room of any negative energy and help set the right mood or ambience. The student should, if available and desirable, play appropriate relaxing music during the attunement ceremony. They should choose a piece of music that's at least 30 minutes long or play the music on a device that will allow the music to repeat continuously. The recipient should choose a piece of music that either means a lot to them or they find relaxing. We recommend using the Reiki chant or heartbeat which is included with the Reiki Master Home Study course. The student should wear loose fitting clothing and remove all jewellery if possible. The student should try to avoid junk food, stimulants and alcohol for at least 24 hours prior to the attunement ceremony. Junk food and alcohol can steal vital energy and make the recipient feel tired and low and spoil the Reiki attunement experience. The student should approach the ceremony with an open mind. It is really important that the student's intention to receive the attunements is clear and true. The student should check their scepticism at the door and be fully open and willing to receive the attunements. Reiki is 100% natural and safe. The student should just relax, let go and enjoy the experience. Important note. The student does not need to be connected to a PC or laptop, and they do not need to be near a phone. The attunements are sent using the intention and surrogate method, and the Reiki symbols as detailed in our Reiki home study course. 
They just need to be relaxed and open to receive the attunements. The student should aim to be sat down, prepared and ready at least five minutes prior to the agreed time of the distant attunement ceremony. The student should have their eyes closed, they should be focused on their breathing, become aware of the music and silently intone a small prayer stating, for example, I, John Smith, ask the Universal Life Force to connect me with Gary and Adele Malone and participate in this sacred attunement ceremony. I am ready, open and willing to accept the Reiki attunements. At the end of the attunement ceremony, the student should take whatever time they need to come back to full awareness and then wash their hands in cold running water as well as drinking a glass of cold water to ground themselves and break the connection to the Reiki master performing the distant attunements. How to perform the Reiki distant attunements. Step 1. Agree the day, date and time with the student for the attunement ceremony. Step 2. Decide on the method of connection. Print out an image of the recipient's home or location if required from Google Maps. Step 3. Decide on the direct intention and surrogate method you will be using during the attunement ceremony. We find a printed image or photo of the recipient is really useful. So ask the recipient if possible to email a photo of themselves to you to use during the attunement. Please note, although we like to use a photo of the recipient during the attunement ceremony, it's not essential. Step 4. Be ready at least five minutes before the agreed time with the Reiki chant or heartbeat music playing in the background. Take a few moments to connect with the Reiki energy and draw in the energy symbols you'll be working with during the distant attunement ceremony. Step 5. Silently atone a short prayer. An example. I call upon Reiki, the Universal Life Force, all the Reiki Masters, past, present and future, especially Dr. Yasui, Dr. Hayashi and Madame Takata, to draw close now and participate in this sacred distant attunement ceremony for John Smith. I ask that the power and wisdom of Reiki sets up this connection now and guides and assists me by allowing our energies to connect across time and space so I may pass on this gift of Reiki through the attunements of John Smith to Yasui Reiki levels 1, 2 and 3. I ask that the attunement is an uplifting and inspiring experience for John Smith so that John Smith can move forward now from this point as a powerful and confident Reiki master teacher. Step 6. Now as you look down at the surrogate, or proxy, imagine or visualize being connected and transported across time and space so you're in the room with the student or recipient of the attunement. Depending on which level of attunement you're performing, imagine or visualize yourself now in front of the recipient and go through the entire process in your mind, or by the physical actions on the surrogate, using the techniques detailed in either lessons 8, 9, 10 or 11. At the end of the attunement ceremony, you should ask the power and wisdom of Reiki to sever the connection between you and the student and ask Reiki to return you to your current location. Conclude the ceremony with a short thank you prayer and finally wash your hands in cold running water as well as drinking a glass of cold water to ground yourself and completely break the connection between yourself and the student. This concludes Lesson 12. Lesson 13. More Advanced Reiki Techniques Reiki Psychic Surgery we all have dormant abilities inside ourselves waiting to be used. The ability to heal ourselves and each other is one of those abilities. It is a simple matter of claiming your power and developing the skill to use it. Psychic surgery is a tool that allows you to take charge of your inner power and use it to heal. The main reason people are not in optimum health is because they attract or create blocks to the flow of life force energy within themselves. These blocks are usually made of ideas, beliefs and emotions that are opposed to the person's maximum well-being. They are usually created because of misunderstandings about how to get one's needs met in a healthy way. Blocks to life force energy usually take on a particular shape and lodge themselves in and around the organs of the body or in the chakras or aura. These negative energy blockages can cause health problems as well as other difficulties in life. Once they are removed, the life force energy returns to its normal healthy flow and the person's health is restored. Psychic surgery can be used to release these negative energy blockages. The process can assist the healing of any problem or difficulty, including emotional difficulties, relationship problems, addictions, spiritual problems, as well as physical health problems. It must be kept in mind that if the person has a physical or psychological problem, it is important for you to advise them to see a relevant healthcare provider and let them know that you will work in conjunction with regular medical or psychological care. Psychic surgery can be done as part of a Reiki session on others and it can also be done on you by you.
Part 1. The first step is to give the cause of the problem an identity. This will allow the client and the practitioner to focus directly on the cause and release it. Giving the problem an identity can be very healing in itself as it allows one to bring the cause into awareness where it can be dealt with. This involves finding the location of a block and deciding what it looks like. Ask the client to think about the issue that they would like to have healed. Note that it's not necessary for them to tell you what the issue is, just for them to think about it. This can be very helpful for many clients as some issues are so sensitive that the client may not want anyone to know about them. Ask them to close their eyes and think of the issue. Ask them if the cause of this problem were to exist in a part of the body, which part would it be in? This is often easy as the client will feel tension or pain in an area of the body whenever they think about the issue. If they have difficulty in choosing an area, just ask the client to guess and reassure them that there is no wrong answer. Ask them to imagine that they are looking into the area they have chosen and ask them if the cause of this problem had a shape, what shape would it be? The shape to be looked for is the shape of the negative energy that is causing or represents the problem. This could be any shape at all. Whatever shape they choose is fine. If a physical organ is what needs healing, the cause will not look like the organ, but will be a shape attached to the organ, a shape close to the organ, or it may be elsewhere in the body or even the aura. There is sometimes more than one location, and if this is the case, it is important to work with the most important location first, and then deal with the other locations one at a time, if they are still present after the initial treatment. Then ask them, if this shape had a colour, or colours, what would it be? Then ask about the surface, about the texture, how heavy it would be. If it made a sound, what sound would it make? Or what it would say if it had a voice? Remember that any answer is okay, and they don't have to be able to answer all of them. After they answer some or all of the questions, the cause will now have a non-verbal identity that the client will be consciously aware of. This gives the client something to focus on and allows you to monitor their progress with each healing session. Ask the client if they're willing to completely let go of the cause and be healed now. Tell the client that you're going to send the problem up to a higher power. Ask them to focus on the shape and concentrate on letting it go. Also ask them to acknowledge and be willing to learn any lessons or receive any information necessary for the healing to take place. The process. The client may be seated or lying on a Reiki table. Move behind the client and draw the power symbol on the palms of your hands and activate it by saying its name three times and either clapping your hands together or tapping each palm with the index and middle finger of the other hand three times. Draw a large power symbol down the front of the client's body and activate the symbol by intoning the name of the symbol three times. Now draw a power symbol on each of your client's chakras to empower them, activating each of them by once again intoning the name of the symbols three times. Now extend your Reiki fingers which will be used in the psychic surgery. This is done by grabbing hold of your fingers and thumbs on your dominant hand with the other non-dominant hand and imagining that they are made of toffee. Stretch them to about 12 to 18 inches or so. Breathe in as you do this several times. Then draw and activate the power symbol on each of the extended fingers and as you tap them affirm that they are extended and have substance. Do this with both hands. Move your hands around and imagine you can feel these extended fingers and the power they contain. Psychic surgery is done with your full focus and intention. It is much like a martial art and done with your entire being using your physical, emotional, mental and spiritual selves. It is done with complete confidence in your ability, knowing that Reiki is all powerful and you will succeed. Say a prayer to yourself and ask that the healing take place within divine love and wisdom so that the highest good is created for all concerned. Ask the client to focus on the location of the blockage and be willing to let go and be healed. Draw a power symbol over the area where the block is located. Now with the full strength of your being, imagine reaching inside the body of the client and grab the negative energy with your extended fingers, pulling it out and releasing it to the ground to dissipate and disappear into the earth. Use your intuition to guide you as to the way that you should pull it out. Breathe in as you pull and out as you release. Repeat this process as many times as you feel is necessary and feel for any change in the area. Allow yourself to be guided and try different techniques as you progress. The client may notice and be able to tell you of any changes that they observe during or after the process. Check back with the client and ask them to describe the shape now. Often the shape will have changed, reduced in size or be gone altogether. Heal the area then with Reiki to fill the location with light. Step back and make a movement similar to a karate chop to sever the connection between you and the client. Also retract your extending fingers by pushing them back into their normal size whilst making a blowing sound. 
You can follow this with full hands-on Reiki treatment if you have time. If there is any resistance and you find that despite your best attempts, the shape has not changed, then it may be that the block has a lesson connected to it that must be communicated to the client before it can be released. Draw the mental emotional symbol over the area and treat with Reiki until it becomes apparent what needs to be done by the client before healing of this issue can occur. This technique works, it is powerful and it's easily learned by anyone willing to take the time to try it. All of our problems are within our ability to solve and it's important to realise that there is always a higher purpose for everything in our lives. What we consider a problem may actually be an opportunity to learn and grow using inner guidance and developing new techniques which allows us to tap more deeply into our innate healing abilities is an important part of our growth process as spiritual healers. This concludes Module 3 of our Reiki Home Study course.